All right, welcome to video two. Today we're gonna to be talking about some tips for training, um, some stuff I've learned with Max, uh, just kind of help you guys with some, some of the questions you guys might have had, um, just working off of some of the feedback from you guys. Um, so I'll go ahead and grab Max and we'll, we'll get started. All right, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is get some treats that you know your dog likes. So Max is very into these things. They're called Zook's Mini Naturals. We get the chicken recipe. There's other flavors, but this is the one that he generally likes. He's already trying to lay down for me. So, just a tip on the treats themselves. You want them to be pretty small. You don't want them to be large ones that take forever to chew, like crunchy ones, um, or just generally large ones. You want them to be small so that you can use a lot of them for a lot of small treats. So you want it to be very quick, like lay down, good boy. Stand up. Good boy, see how quick that was. All right, so the first few that we're gonna talk about, very basic ones, are gonna be sit and lay down. Good boy. Two of probably the easiest ones that you'll ever teach your dog or puppy, just because they're the most natural things for a dog to do. They like sitting, they like laying down. So, the first thing you wanna do when you're teaching your dog to sit, or your puppy to sit, is have them in the standing position, obviously, so stand. So for a puppy, it'll be pretty easy. You just kind of stand them up. Stand, stand up. Max, sit. So when you tell them to sit, you want to initially kind of not too hard because you don't want to push down too much, but you want to push their back end down. Once they do, good sit, good boy. So I'll be talking about that, but positive reinforcement is definitely key when you're te teaching a puppy, especially how to do um, simple commands. So when you say lay down, and if they aren't doing it, you kind of want to give them a little help. Good boy, good lay down, good boy. And you want to reinforce the lay down. You want to reinforce the sit. Stand up, good stand up. And that's early on, so obviously Max knows what sit, lay down, all these things are. All right, so the next trick that I'll discuss is rolling over. This one's a little bit more advanced, but still pretty easy. With puppies, it's a little bit harder because they think that you're trying to play with them the whole time, especially when you have food. All they want is the food. And then when you start doing stuff, they just start freaking out. But this is the easiest way that I know to go about it, and I've been told this by a few other trainers as well, is when you have them laying down, first you wanna notice what side their legs go to. Sometimes they'll lay with their legs this way, sometimes that way. If his legs are this way, obviously he does not want to roll this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have him, if he, I want him to roll this way, I'm gonna start with the treat so he knows that I have it. And then when I say roll over, roll over, I'm gonna start pushing it back here. So it causes him to look backward, good roll over. It causes him to look this way and it almost start, it starts his momentum this way. And then you can kind of initially, especially with puppies, cause they think that you're, gonna, you're playing, initially you're gonna wanna kinda give it some put, give them some push, like, hey, roll over, and then you're pushing, <laughs> pushing him. So lay down. Good boy, good lay down. Also, you don't wanna say stuff multiple times because they're gonna associate that with, oh, I can do it whenever I want. No, when you say a command, that's when they do it. Notice how his legs are now this way, so I'll go ahead and do the roll over the other way. Max, roll over. Good boy, good roll over. Roll over, good boy. So, you can kind of see how um, that one can be pretty easy, but with puppies, again, it's a little bit harder because they think that you're trying to play, they think that you're just trying to wrestle around with them. All right, so another one is going to be the stay command, and this one's pretty easy, especially um, for older dogs, maybe not for puppies, because they want to play, again. So I'm gonna have Max come over here. Max, come. Good boy, come here. Max, sit. Stay. So when you say stay, they're gonna, they're, they don't know what it is yet. When you take a step backward, if they start to move, that's when you say no, no, and then you put them back. And it's just trial and error. Once you say stay again, if you move back and they don't move, you shouldn't keep moving. That first step is already uh, should be awarded. So once you move one step back, you say, good, good boy, good stay. Now when you say stay, maybe you take one step back, two steps back, okay, now two steps is a graduation from one, so you say, good boy, good stay. So it's, 
This trick is just more of a graduation uh, type of trick that you want to kind of get them to different limits. Stay. Also, this is one of the ones where it's very key to not continue to say it. So when you say stay, you say it once. That's it. You don't say stay, 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 because that's going to get annoying. If you want them to stay somewhere and you're doing something with people, like it's going to be annoying when you when you say stay, and then you're trying to talk to people and you're stay. Stay, and it, like you just want to tell them to stay, and then they'll just be done. So another thing about the stay command is, once they get it for pretty long distances, it really doesn't matter the distance as long as they can see you, they know that you're coming back. It's when you go out of sight that they start freaking out, especially as puppies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say stay, and hopefully when I well with Max he obviously will because he knows this one really well but when I get out of sight, he's still there. If your dog starts moving, you say no. And to make it a little bit easier for this portion, you can also use an object such as a sectional, a couch, a chair, something that's not too large, that's not a barrier like a wall, but more of like a, a, an object that you can kind of still see your dog from or over. You can't see a dog through a wall, but you can see them over a couch, but there's still that physical separation of an object between you two. So that might be your sort of step between being far away from them and then far away th from them, but behind something like a wall. So I'm gonna go, go behind the sectional. Sorry for my floor being Max and I were playing. Good boy, good stay. So reward them. And then once they get that down, you can work on stay, walk outside. I can literally leave the house for a few minutes, come back, and he'll still be laying right there. So a similar command to stay, but completely different, is wait. When you tell them to stay, you want them to stay in a, in a certain place until you give them the okay to move from there. A wait command is telling them that they don't have to stay in that exact spot, they just have to wait for an object or something that you want them to wait for, like maybe getting fed or a treat or uh, getting in the car. You don't want to tell them stay or something. You just say wait and they can, you know, hang out and do whatever. And then when you say okay, then they know it's okay to get in the car. So what you're going to want is um, treats that you're using uh, regularly for your pup that are the quick ones to eat. But then also, my kitchen is a mess right now, so don't pay any attention. Also, get a larger treat that um, has a different scent to it that is distinguishable from these. And I'll show you why in a second. Okay, Max, sit. Lay down. <laughs> wow, that was the slowest lay down I've ever seen, but good boy, good lay down, good job. All right, so what you're gonna wanna do for weight is you're gonna have the treat that you don't normally use but and smells different from your normal treats and put that down on the ground. As you're putting that on the ground, you say weight. Initially, your puppy is gonna be different than Max because Max is already trained on this. Initially, they're gonna be doing this. Okay, they're gonna be trying to get at it like this. Once they stop, then you go, okay, good boy, good wait, good wait. So you don't give them the treat that they've been waiting for. Don't say, okay, I just messed that up. Don't say, okay, say, good boy, good wait. Because when you say, okay, that's allowing them to get this and he can't have this yet. So wait. Good boy, good wait, good wait, good boy. So when I say wait, so I'm gonna say okay so that he starts going at it. You're, when you say wait, okay, I'm gonna start doing that. So you just have to make sure that your hand's over it. Once they stop doing it, wait, wait. Once they stop doing it and they aren't going at it, then you say good boy, good wait. Good wait, good boy. And maybe after all that training, you can say, once they have it down, when you go wait, and they can see it, and they're not going for it, 
then you can say, okay, good boy, good wait. We're gonna move on to a different kind of trick that's not just a command, but it's also uh, interactive to where they, uh, the dog actually does something for you. So Max, stand up. We're gonna have him touch my hand. So this is gonna train, this is gonna be good for training later on if you want them to heal like, uh, or to go to somewhere where your hand is or uh, touch things that you want them to touch or maybe grab things for you that you want them to grab. When I say touch, I'm gonna put my hand up here and say touch, good boy. So he knows that his nose needs to touch my hand in order to get him get a treat for saying touch. Uh, initially it was difficult because he had no idea what I wanted out of him, but once he jumped and touched my hand, after I said touch, I, you immediately have to award him and make sure he knows that that's the good thing to do and that's what touch is. And then after that it was just pretty easy. So I guess while we're at it and on the topic of training, um, I guess I could do another one, the spin, which is also a pretty easy one. And I didn't do shake, so I'll do that as well. So Max, stand up. You normally want them standing for spin. Spin. And also it's another leading tactic, just like rolling over. You want them to start going in the direction that you want them to go because then they'll do it. And then once they know that spin <laughs> is the word for it, they'll just do it with very minimal motion. Spin. Good boy, good spin. Hey, spin. Good boy, good spin. So you'll ha the more you do it, the more he'll associate the word with the action rather than the motion with the action. So the less movement you'll have to do. Max, spin. Good boy. Good spin. Max, spin. Good boy, good spin. See, just in this last three or four, he's remembering. Spin. So I barely have to do anything. All right, so for shake, shake is a very easy one. I don't know if you want to do right paw, left paw. For now, all we have is shake and then I'll probably have other paw for the other one. But just initially when you want to teach him shake, the first thing that you do, Max stay, is once you say shake, you grab their paw. So you say shake, good boy, good shake. And then you continually do it. Shake, good boy, good shake. So then once you say shake, good boy, they instantly associate them touching your hand with their paw as shake. Okay, so for going to places, like go to your bed. Good boy, good go to your bed. Um, I can talk about those in a different video if you guys want. Uh, that's really useful for if you have guests are coming over or um, someone that is not okay with dogs or whatever. Maybe I want him to go to his chair because we're hanging out in the kitchen and I want him to be hanging out over there. So I want to be like, hey Max, I need you to kind of be somewhere else just for a little bit. So I'm gonna say, hey Max, go to your chair. Good boy, good go to your chair, you stay. Then, now that you've trained your dog to stay places as well, then he knows, okay. Oh, whoops, I just said okay, <laughs> Max, stay. <laughs> then he knows that he needs to stay there for the remainder of time until you release him. Your release word usually is either okay or come. I tried to say those very quietly or else he's gonna <laughs> release. Also, you wanna have another word that might release him from um, just anything in general. So instead of Instead of saying come or giving him another task to do, you want him to just be like, just free or, or whatever. I, my keyword is free. So when he's over there and he's staying, if I want him to just be like chill and back to dog, normal dog stuff without coming or without sitting or doing another command, Max free. Once I say free, he's good. He can come with me, he can go to his bed, he can do whatever he wants. But That'll be for later videos. If you guys want, I can put something together like that. It does involve um, collar training, which it's not a shock collar, but it is a muscle stimulant collar, just like a TENS unit that you would use for muscle stimulation on your arm or on your back, any muscles that have uh, flaring up issues. Um, so that one might be a little more involved uh, when it comes to, to finances because they get pretty pricey. But I won't get into that. If you guys want that, I can 
make a video about that, but um, that's it for today. We will be back next week with hopefully our Max staying at home video, as long as that doesn't take too long to edit. Uh, have a couple hours of footage to go through, but hope you guys enjoyed. Go ahead and subscribe if you're not already, and if you wanna keep up to date with Max, we post once a week on Monday, uh, and intermitt intermittently whenever we want, but Max is done for the night. So we will see you next time. Thank you.